Well, joining us now, security analyst Tami Tokwe Olodo and international affairs analyst Dele Ogun both uh, join us, us from London for more on the situation in Ukraine. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us on the program. Mr. Ogun, let's hear your thoughts on this. And I know that we've talked about this before, you know, the what Russia wants out of this war and now Russia is saying it would uh, scale down military operations in north in uh, Kiev and in northern Ukraine. Uh, we're talking about citizens like Chinaev and so on. What do you think? Uh, well, let me begin by saying that is, is this not the most stupid war ever? Uh, what uh, Ukraine is now saying that it's ready to agree to uh, to be a neutral zone and not to join the gang up against Russia. Is that not what Russia was asking for in the first instance before the first missile, the first bullet was fired? Um, there, uh, and the talk that Russia is um, changing its agenda, I've read some of the narrative. Of course, it presupposes that we believe what NATO was saying in the first instance that Russia was looking to colonize Ukraine. I mean, everybody knows that when it comes to matters like this, um, this would be top secret material as far as the Russians concerned in terms of their agenda in Ukraine. So what NATO did was to blow up and play up uh, the Russian agenda that they wanted to swallow Ukraine, uh, such that when the Russians now say we've achieved what we sought to achieve, and we had no interest in taking Kiev, they can now start making the alternative noise uh, that the Russians, uh, because of the support that they provided to Ukraine, the Russians are now uh, scaling back. But the peace talks is always going to be welcome to all civilized peoples. It was a matter of regret that this ever had to come uh, to this level, but there have been so many casualties, not just to Ukrainians. Um, list, we should list amongst the casualties of this war uh, this concept of the free world that they like using as against the captive world, the still enslaved world. That has been blown to pieces because we've now seen the limits of their freedom, S massive constraints on freedom of information because they wanted us and their people to swallow the narrative. The other casualty is truth. Uh, truth has been savaged and damaged uh, by this propaganda and information war uh, that has been pushed. Uh, list amongst the other casualties, globalization. Um, the trust is gone. If we now live in a world where we know that if the Western powers do not like what you're doing, they will simply unplug you. They will disconnect you from the system and from the networks that the world was supposed to be sharing. And the final casualty, as far as I see it, is race relations. Uh, this war has highlighted uh, the racial barriers uh, like never before, uh, such that it's very much now the West against the rest. Um, so uh, the, the peace talks are welcome. Um, it, the war should never have happened in the first instance uh, because what Russia was insisting upon uh, was that Ukraine should remain neutral and not join NATO. And I is that now what we've gathered around to discuss? I, I hear you when you say, you know, this war should have never happened. And now looking in, with hindsight, you know, um, I'm sure that many world leaders realize that. But the Ukrainian president has addressed uh, parliaments uh, in Europe, also addressed the U.S. Uh, Senate as well. And, and he's been hailed, you know, for standing his ground for Ukraine, resisting the Russian uh, forces. Would you call him a hero? Do you think that, you know, he has come out of this a hero of some sort? He's come out as the comedian that he, he was from the beginning. Uh, that was his background. And he's come out as a big jerk uh, because uh, that, of course, they will all be cheering him in their parliaments because they simply used the Ukrainian people. They slaughtered and sacrificed the Ukrainians. For what purpose? In order to attack Russia. They didn't have the courage to attack Russia directly, but they engineered a proxy war whereby little Ukraine will stand up to big, powerful, nuclear-armed uh, nuclear Russia. 
because they were pouring in the weapons and pouring in the money and pouring in the propaganda behind it. So he's come out as a complete idiot, as far as I'm concerned, uh, wasted the lives of so many of his people to come back to where we started in the first instance, which is Ukraine, your sovereign country, remain neutral, will respect your neutrality, uh, um, but you cannot join that gang up against Russia, which NATO is. And they, they've been completely used, and the Ukrainian people are the, uh, the most unfortunate victims of the whole exercise. Let me come back to um, you, uh, Mr. Ogun, and that is um, what Ukraine expects, security guarantees. And then we have, uh, of course, the U.S. Uh, Secretary of State saying that um, there are no signs of seriousness coming from the Russian side with this negotiations. I mean, if Ukraine is already offering neutrality, why hasn't the war ended? It hasn't ended because America doesn't want it to end. NATO does not want it to end. It was always a proxy war. Their agenda was to use little Ukraine to bleed Russia uh, militarily and uh, financially. That was their agenda. So they've been using Ukraine. So it's, it's a joke for them, the puppet masters standing behind saying the puppet is not talking peace or the other side is not talking peace is because they are not listening. They weren't listening from the beginning. Uh, Putin told them, we told you these were our red lines. You didn't listen. You took in um, uh, Lithuania. You took in uh, other smaller countries that were formerly part of the USSR uh, zone of influence. And we, you, whereas you had promised all along that you would not take one inch eastwards. Instead, you've taken a mile eastwards and you're right on our borders. So, uh, I mean, peace, the war would never have begun. Let's make this clear. The war would never have started in the first instance if NATO was not involved, if NATO was not standing behind Ukraine and egging the Ukrainian leadership on. The war would have ended weeks ago for the same reason, if NATO and America were not standing behind the Ukrainians. It has continued as long as it has, and it will continue as long as it will, as long as NATO and America are poking their nose in the business. Now, now that we're at this point, and this question is for both of you uh, gentlemen, now that we're at this point where, you know, we're gradually seeing the end of the war because uh, it, it looks like it right now uh, with leaders, um, you know, finally sitting to talk and uh, the Russian foreign minister saying that uh, the, last set, the last lap of the talks will be uh, President Putin and uh, President Zelensky is sitting at the table to face each other, you know, to have this conversation. Um, do you think that there are any regrets on either side over this war? Yeah, I, I think there, there, there are regrets. Um, Russians will look back at the way in which they have fought this war. Of course, you know, they're not losing. They have lost a lot of materials. They've lost people along the line, but they've also exhibited their weakness. So it's like somebody fighting Tyson and Tyson taking, you know, seven rounds before knocking out the the other opponent. The people waiting by the side could see where the weaknesses are. So some some part of Russia have been you now the military might have been revealed. Weaknesses in their military might have been revealed and they need to go back and look at it. I think for Ukraine, they need to look back and say, okay, actually we thought the West would come to our aid, but all they did was to say, take these weapons and, you know, fight this war on your, on your, or on your own terms. Now, it's not benefited them. They've destroyed their country. They are now going to be giving money, you know, and those money they have to pay back. Britain was paying back, you know, even to the United States for the Second World War. So they are in depth. This is capitalism in reality, you know, 101. So there is no winner in this war. Of course, you know, Ukraine will claim that they've been able to push back Russia. You know, Russia will claim that they've been able to get what they want. But at the end of the day, the casualty are the, you know, general citizens of Ukraine who have lost loved ones, lost, have their life disrupted because of this silly war that was not meant to start in the first instance. Mr. Ogun. Well, I, I could, I'll say that I can't see uh, Putin sitting down with Zelensky. Uh, he's made his position clear in the first instance. This guy's a clown president who has led his peoples into what we all agree 
has been an unnecessary full circle uh, clownish war. Um, we're back where we should have been in the first instance without a single fatality. I think the regret is this, is the regret of all of us. When we think about the lives that we all struggled to save uh, during the uh, natural epidemic, that was, um, that was not man-made, at least we hope it was not man-made. And we showed the best part of our humanity when everybody rallied together to save lives across the world, only for these idiots uh, to now launch a war as soon as the COVID crisis is over, to launch a war in which man is just casually taking lives, the very lives that we're struggling to save. So it's a matter of regret, uh, but I think this will probably be the end of NATO as well. Uh, uh, um, and, and this gang up of nations for one purpose only, which is to make war. Gentlemen, it's been a real pleasure speaking to both of you. Wish we had more time, uh, but we can't talk about regrets. And, uh, you know, uh, now that we're at, you know, what we hope is the last lap of this war uh, with the negotiations going on, we we'll hope you join us again uh, when we have to discuss some more about this. Uh, Timitopo Olodo, a pleasure having you. Delogun, thank you for joining us. Thank you. And Marcia, I still have one question, and that is Ukraine. Are you saying that they remain um, a country that looks to Russia, that stays on their own without sovereignty? They remain neutral, in the sense. They remain neutral. That's what they just said. Okay. Mm -hmm.